content creator, Kimberly Lane Roberts. I am the founder of Performance Leadership International. I am dedicated to helping women entrepreneurs design a wealthy lifestyle, both inside and out, by incorporating wealth, wisdom, tools, tips, and resources that empower them personally and professionally. Every episode will feature myself along with a guest, and together we will share our personal journeys to a wealthy lifestyle on my globally recognized show, Wealth and Women with Kimberly. Kimberly. Hello, everybody. It's Wealth in Women with Kimberly, and I'm Kimberly Lane Roberts, your content creator, and we have a wonderful show today. As always, we have a featured guest who will share with you her wonderful story, insights, and tips, and how you personally can manifest wealth in abundance in all areas of your life. Why? Because I truly believe wealth is freedom, and freedom and wealth is joy. So our show today is very dynamic. Um, it's actually a person that I know we have uh, had, had many wonderful experiences together. Um, we have in common that we're both very accomplished and driven women. Um, she's highly educated. And as many of us find in our paths of success, we realize we are chasing the American dream and we're not living our dream. And so today's show is about how we can stop chasing the American dream, start living our dream. And she's going to share with us some really good habits, uh, uh, wealth habits, as far as our abundance are concerned and creating your own personal wealth, monetarily wise and wealth enjoy by some holistic habits. Okay. So before I bring her up today, what I'd like to do is share a little bit about myself and how I serve other women, business owners and entrepreneurs. As you know, my company is Performance Leadership International, and I serve women and business owners and leaders in two different ways, one-on-one -on -one executive coaching, and then I also am creating a wonderful Bay Area peer advisory group that is a non-competing business group of women and men to help really to challenge yourself to not only grow your business and to grow yourself. So if you truly are intentional this year about really taking the next level in your business and for your own personal growth, please reach out to me on Performance Leadership International. Okay, let's introduce our wonderful guest, Candace Wilkinson. She is president and founder of Wilkinson Consulting. She has a BA and a BS from the University of California, Irvine, and an MBA from University of California, Los Angeles, and the National University of Singapore. And I have to say, I was personally there on her graduation. <laughs> it was a great, I'm just talking about having an international MBA from the National uh, University of Singapore, way cool, right? So um, she has had many, many, many corporate executive careers um, spanning the globe and not only in the United States, really looking at strategic alliances. And as we mentioned, she got a little burned out. So let's bring her up from the green room and talk about how she changed her life through some holistic uh, wealth uh, methodology. All right. I'm going to bring her up. Hold on. Oops, that's Thurston, her little puppy. I love that guy. <laughs> anyway, here's, uh, here we go, Candace. Are you up here? Two, one. Here you go. There she is. Hey, Thurston's already stealing the show. Bella I know. <laughs> Our two dogs used to play together. They were so cute. So now you are in wonderful, where do you live now? I live in Savannah, Georgia. So I bought a home last year. Um, and am in the process of restoring a little over a hundred year old home in right outside the historic district. That is super cool. Super, yeah, super cool. it's, a, it's super. a lot of work. I'm sure it is, but I know you have the dedication, the skill sets and determination to make it happen. I want to see, as we talked about this, I want to see the pre and post picture, pictures. Yeah, eventually. absolutely. So, yeah. So let's talk about our wealth and wealth and women journey share. Um, I'm kind of curious, when did it occur to you that you were chasing the American dream, but not living the American dream? What was that pivotal moment of clarity? Yeah. So I think it started right before my, my only child was going to college. I was working um, for a global company, a large international market research firm, and we were sitting down to have dinner and he was talking to me about his day. And it was about eight o'clock at night. Um, and I stopped to answer an email because one of my clients was in another time zone. And my son looked at me and he was like, mom, mom. And I was just so engrossed in my Blackberry. This is when we all have Blackberries. And he finally said, hey, I'm about to move across the country to go to college. I am never going to call you to tell you about my day. Can the email wait? 
And it was just like this, this light bulb went off of like, wait a second, we've been told to grind it out and to do all these things, but I'm missing the whole point of, of making this money and being able to spend time with people I love, my family and friends and enjoy just a dinner. And so it was that aha moment where I was like, okay, like something needs to shift. And so two weeks after, um, I looked over some finances, gave my notice. Um, my son at 18, 17 at the time, almost 18, was like, whoa, this is really extreme. But I tend to like have my pendulum swing um, in extreme ways. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So, you make a decision you go. This is true. <laughs> I know yeah. You. And yeah. so um, I, my company had asked me to stay on for another month while they tried to find my replacement. And then I took my son and one of his best friends on a beautiful trip around Italy on a charter boat. And then he and I did a road trip along the South, starting in Charleston and ending in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, when I dropped him off at college for his freshman Aww, year. Oh, what a yeah. special moment. I bet he I know. Does, Lots of tears. Does, he, does he talk about that? Oh, I bet so. Does he talk about that memory a lot? He, you know, he does, but what he emphasizes more because he was a California kid who went to the South was why he chose the school, uh, the University of Alabama, because he got a lot of questions. And before it was lots of jokes, football and girls. And then as he got a little older, he said, hey, the South instilled the values that my mom instilled in me. It's being polite, it's opening doors, it's courtesy, it's manners, it's eye contact, it's stopping and chatting and being of service. And he said all of those fundamentals that he learned at home, which is a great compliment to me and, and his father um, was, the reason why he chose the school. And that's kind of where you moved to the South just recently as well, right? I did. So um, I left LA. Um, I was getting a little dangerous. Uh, my son has grown. He was in Paris in culinary school and then is now working in LA managing my family's restaurants um, in their kitchen. And I didn't oh, cool. have anything holding me down. And I took a leap of faith and my son is going to come and open a restaurant um, and building a carriage house. So he'll have a place to stay. So it makes it nice. And so I guess I'm just doing the footwork for him and he'll come into a beautifully restored home. <laughs> so, but no, I want to come and visit. I just think that's yeah. it is so charming. Um, my mom is from Austin, Texas, but just, and then I'll always say I'm from the East coast and the Midwest and Kansas city, but there is, you know, I love California for the weather, but there is Absolutely. something grounded about the South. I mean, my husband is from North Carolina and yeah. um, that whole area is just uh, Savannah and South Carolina, all that is just so beautiful. And it, all the historical piece of it, right? Yeah. It's just breathtaking. It's all been restored. And there's just, there's a feeling of tradition. There's a feeling of, of a foundation. There's a feeling of just, you know, that's why I married my husband. I was looking for a Southern gentleman for those very reasons. Yeah. Opens the door, you know, traditional, you know, male in many, many, many ways. Right. And um, very polite. And um, yeah. So good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Well, and so, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say you and I have talked because we're of our friendship, just of qualities that we admire and you being from the Midwest and growing up there and living there. We had that similar alignment on, hey, this is what you do. And some faith based, it, it doesn't always have to be your traditional scope of religion, but just that common respect of, hey, I, I see you, I hear you. And we're in this together. You may be taking a different road, but the end game is still the same. Right. And, you know, I think, do you remember this where we were both seeing a spiritual medium? I do. Yeah. And through one of our, my individual sessions with her name was Candace as well at the time. And somehow I find out through Candace that you see Candace as well. And we were, we were friends at that point. And that was pretty hysterical. We are, we already spiritually connected that way. Right. Well, I thought we figured this out when we first met at Gulfstream. It could have been. It could have yeah. been. It could have been. That maybe that's what's that maybe that was the instigator while we 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 became friends and we both laughed that we are the our friendship is the best thing that came out of Gulfstream and many some Absolutely. other stories. There, there's some maybe stories that need to stay there, but yeah, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Wonderful. So um so uh going so so having that clarity, and obviously you took a break. I did. Um and 
did some, you know, had their had had the wealth and and the ability then to be able to travel and have some, a really wonderful moment before you you dropped your son off at college. And I think that really strengthened your relationship, especially since you're going to be apart. So, but what were the practices that you started to incorporate? What I'm sure you did some research. You had to figure out what resonated with you. So, what have you learned in that process, and what do you adopt today in order to to be living your dream? Um, because at the end of the day. I do believe, like if I had a daughter, I, you know, my philosophy would be, sweetheart, I am going to teach you, you're going to get educated so that you can make your own money. So you marry for love, you have the freedom to do what, whatever you want to do. You're not tied down to corporate. You're not, you know, it's just whatever it is, but she has the freedom to leave any situation and ultimately do what she wants to do. And she's not stuck, you know, because yeah. we know a lot of women can be stuck because we're we just don't have the income to make the changes we want to do. So, so it's building our wealth, but then also not having our wealth own us, but you know, and then the whole area of abundance in our life. So what are some of the tools, your habits that you incorporated and that you incorporate on a daily basis? Yeah. So I was working with a career coach um, and she was based out of LA and we got very clear on what my values were. And it's not just my personal values with my, personal relationships, but also how those encompass my workplace and the organizations that I'm interacting with. And so one of my big values is collaboration and teamwork and everybody having an equal place at the table. As you know, being a higher executive woman, you're not always heard or little little um, backhanded compliments of, hey, she got this done, but we're going to go ahead and dismiss it for she's attractive or something along those lines. Right. And so it was really important for me to figure out what it was that was important to me. And I feel like when you're in that nine to five daily grind chasing that dream, you get so lost because you think that dream is, oh, okay, so it's six figures. Okay, now I got these six figures, but maybe it's the title. Maybe it's managing this much. Maybe it's getting a bigger bonus. Except when I really came down to it, it was what makes me me? Who makes me whole? And how do I honor myself? And creating those boundaries, not only personally, but professionally as well. And so even in a professional aspect, I like uh, a work-life balance so that I could spend that time with the people I love. Hence my son teaching me a val very valuable lesson. Um, so my phone goes on do not disturb. I tend to have two phones, one for business, and I will turn off my business phone at certain hours. I'll check it maybe an hour or so before bed, but I'm really, really firm to make sure I allow myself undivided attention for the people I care about. And that's really what is bringing me value and bringing me joy. And it's really hard to do. I'm not perfect by any means. Um, it's still a practice, but I try to be very disciplined in that. No, I really think, you know, especially since we're all, most of us are working from home as we sit in our homes today exactly. and really yeah. having that balance between work and home, because it, there's such a blur, there's such a blend. Mm -hmm. I think it gives us ability to I mean, I've started to look at my day now that I've got the addition of two kids and an extra dog for Sammy, a sister for Sammy. Um, so my day, you know, I, I'm up at five, I get my workout in, I'm taking the dog out, so I, but I'm also doing emails in the beginning. So mm -hmm. but I know till pretty much about four o'clock that <clears throat> it's a mix, it's a mix of work and and whatever kids stuff comes in. It's so I try to prioritize my day at the given moment. What's the best decision of where my time needs to be spent with the kids? Cause they have an emergency you need picked up from school, the yeah. dogs, or it's a client issue. Right. So, you know, kind of, and then time blocking those things as much as you can. But by that time after four o'clock, cause I, I'm kind of like phone goes off. Cause it's like, it's family yeah. time or, you know, I call my mom every day. So, that's that to me, that window of five to four, that's enough time to be able to take care of stuff. And, you know, if it's urgent, people know to text me, but it's like, rarely is it life or death, right? So it's not that something can't wait till the morning, right? So well, just realizing it's not just because you can get me doesn't mean it's urgent, right? Exactly. Well, and I love that point right there, because with everything, social media, cell phones, texting, emails, everyone having a smartphone, the accessibility to, to you and I is it's impervious. It's crazy. But the fact that we feel like we need to give an immediate response 
And that's what I've learned myself, which has brought me more peace and just internal joy. Hey, just because someone texts me, they don't need an immediate response. Exactly. Exactly. And then it's gauging, okay, so what is urgent? What is an emergency? What could wait? And being comfortable enough in your own to say, okay, it's cool. And a lot of my peers know my phone goes on do not disturb at 10 o'clock. So unless you're on my favorites and there are like five people on my favorites, you're not getting through. <laughs> you're not getting Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, right. It's like, yep. So, um, yeah. Um, so from us, I know you are very spiritual as well. So what are anything, any spiritual practices that you, that you've incorporated, whether it's on a daily basis, weekly basis, but th what things help get you centered and give yeah. you, make sure you have that time for clarity. Cause I really think, um, obviously there are some days that are extremely busy cause they just have to be, but what, what gives you moments of clarity for you? Yeah. So every morning, um, my alarm goes off about six o'clock. I get up immediately. I don't hit snooze. Um, and then I take a moment, a couple deep breaths. I meditate for about 30 minutes. Then I immediately take my dog for a walk. No phone. I don't even look at my phone. And so I think just having that moment of peace instead of being bombarded with everything during the day helps a ton. And then I also have a gratitude journal and I make sure mm. I give thanks because I've noticed the more things that I'm grateful for, the more abundance comes into my life, whether it's through friendships or even wealth. And I'm grateful for the money I have. And it's visualizing all of these things and then going on a walk and seeing a butterfly and getting grounded and seeing nature. And then I'll come home. I'll do my workout, have a cup of coffee. It's about eight o'clock and I'll start my day. And I've accomplished so much in those two hours, but those two hours are 100% for me. And then on the flip side, my phone goes on do not disturb at 10 o'clock. I'm in bed by 10, reading a book and just having quiet time. And so it, there's, I limit my screen time, which I think is huge. And Agreed. again, that accessibility. I agree. I totally agree. I think really putting a black box around it, if you will, is very, very important. Very important. Yeah. So um, you've got an a, a interesting wisdom tip that I want to share here. Um, when you're aligned on your path, oh, this is mine, excuse me. Um, <laughs> well, we'll talk about mine right now for a second. Yeah, okay. let's so, do it. Um, and so I, you know, I was thinking about this because we both are extremely driven, highly educated, whatever. And we were like, go, go, go. We're thinking, oh, if we reach that you know, CEO or whatever, vice president, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and we're going to be happy. And we got that realization, well, I've got everything I wanted, but I'm not happy. And, you know, so, so I really feel like when we're, when we're aligned in our purpose and we've kind of gotten our clarity and it becomes whatever we're doing, even if we have achieved where we want to go, we're, okay, we're happy. We're happy because, no, hey, hey Thurston, um, because we're in the journey uh, and it's our selected journey versus when we're on a path that's not right for us or we haven't gotten our clarity or become aligned with where we're going, it's going to be hard. Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts around that? So I, I love that. Um, and I feel like so many people get lost on their path because growing up, we're told it's, it's doing something that isn't necessarily our path, whether it's getting married and having children, and that's not a good fit for everyone. Or maybe some women want to be married, have children, and still have a career and not stay at home. But I think it's us accepting others for their path and what it is they want to do as long as they are living their true, authentic self. And I think that's really key. Agreed. And I Agreed. Yep. That kind of leads us to your wonderful tip. Now, here we are. Yeah. Um, accept people for who they are. Um, and if you do so, you will accept them for who they are and want to do life with them, um, or, you know, connect with them or have a relationship with them or you won't. So can you, yeah. so when did you come to that realization? So, um, I actually follow a wonderful guy on social media called Al Lunar. Um, and this is something he had shared with us and what he said, and it's, it's doing, doing life with someone, but not in the totality where it necessarily needs to be romantic. It could be, hey, Kim, you and I met at work and I, I love you, but you're just going to be a coworker because we don't align. And me accepting you as, in that role and being okay with it. Or some huge character flaw with a, a per 
potential friend or romantic partner. And it's asking yourself, if this flaw never changes, can I continue living with them? Or am I going to try to change them? And nobody wants to be changed. There's resentment. There's resentment on the person who's trying to change the other person to fit this ideal. And resentment on the person who is trying or who I'm trying to change. And so I think it's just getting really clear and then being able to walk away when you see something that's not right for you. Mm -hmm. And most times it's as cliche as it sounds, people show you who they are the first time. Second time is like, hey, we showed you the first time. And it's up to us to finally put that boundary and say, okay, I'm not comfortable with this. There is a misalignment. I wish you all. I love you. Go in peace. Send you light and love. But we're not meant to be on the same path. Exactly. Exactly. Um, do you ever, you, you might not know this, but Dr. Laura Schlesinger, Schlesinger do, you, do, you reckon, do you know her name? I do. The name sounds familiar. Yeah. So she, she is, was a psychiatrist, I believe, or a psychologist, one of the two, but obviously in that realm. And she had a talk show. So when I was in pharmaceuticals, I'd usually try to plan my appointments between my one appointment to the next to listen to her talk show. Yeah. And it was mostly women calling in about relationships or it was men calling in about relationships. But this is kind of in general, kind of to your point. And she'd be like, why ladies, when you see the writing on the wall about who this person is, you choose to be illiterate. It's yeah. like we purposely know we know what's going on. We see it, but we deny it. Like we just become illiterate about it. And and it comes back to bite us, right? Because people told us who they were. And, yeah. and it's because we thought they were going to change or hoping they were going to change or try to make them change, you know, then we get burned and that's our, really our own fault, right? So. Well, but I, I think part of that just as women is we've been raised through society globally to be polite, to be quiet. And that way, when someone touches you and you're uncomfortable, you just smile and you go, huh. <laughs> Don't do that, you know, instead of saying, what's going on? No, this is not okay. You don't get to touch me. You don't get to speak to me this way where I feel like men get a pass in this area. Totally, totally. And I, totally. I, what I love about our friendship, Kimberly, and a lot of my girlfriends that I have surrounded by me, by me or with me is we empower each other and we empower each other to be strong, independent, and hey, don't. Don't take any bull from anyone. Like, absolutely not. He's not of your caliber. Don't don't lower yourself. And you shouldn't have to be told to be a bigger person. Um, maybe just stop hanging around so many little people and and knowing that that's okay. <laughs> right. Right. You know, and as I often say, you know, we are we are the average of the top five people we spend the most time with. So, you know, if, if you're feeling down or depressed or you're not reaching your goals or, you know, you're feeling better or to, you know, just unmotivated or not, you know, whatever. Just look around who you're, who you're hanging out with. Are you, you know, you're hanging out with the turkeys or you're hanging out with the eagles, right? So exactly. Yeah. Well, so. And, and to even echo your point, are, are you hanging out with people who are proud of you or are they resentment and envious of your success? And when you're hanging out with people who are consistently envious and jealous of you, they're going to do small little digs. Those backhanded compliments that, tear you down a little where you're like, Hey, wait a second. That's not cool. Um, and so it really is just finding your squad and making sure they're a powerful bunch who appreciate and encourage you to do those, those scary things, but still support you nonetheless. No, I mean, and I, and I, it, it unfortunately it's harder as we get more successful to find that, it um, is. But, but, you know, people like you and I are out there and um, we encourage you to connect with us in LinkedIn. It's Candace Wilkinson and Kimberly Lane Roberts. But yeah. yeah, so it just but yeah, like you, it's just it's unfortunate because um, women can't can be. I'm not saying everybody. Um, uh, yeah, um, we'll just leave it at that. But yes, finding <laughs> finding your squad. I like that. Finding your squad. Yeah. So, or um, your so what do you do? F anything in, a, in the morning for as far as setting an intention? Because I'm really big about setting intentions yeah so every morning when i wake up when i put my feet on the ground i i tell myself today is going to be a great day and it could be a great day with lessons and opportunities because i mean let's face it it's never always my ties and butterflies you know you have like those those days where you're like oh man come on god like 
I, I'm, I'm really tired learning these lessons and on these opportunities, like a small little reprieve, but it really is the way you frame things. And so I feel like as soon as you put your feet on the ground, if you tell yourself it's going to be a great day, it's going to be a great day. And I mean, sometimes I put my feet on the ground and say it's a great day and then I trip over something. Usually it's my dog and I'm like, well, thank you for letting me know, like to be <laughs> observant yeah, and like- Exactly, it's going to be a, a testing day today, but you know, I'm starting it that way. So, um, yeah. you know, one thing that I do, I'm, I'm really big on candles. And so I have this candle, it's T and H and this one, they have different scents like lemongrass. This is lavender. And I just like these when I, I have one on my desk on both sides of my desk and I mm -hmm. light it with an intention of, like you said, this is going to be a great day. Um, my goal is in my business is all my business is going to come from referrals where I don't have to be cold calling people anymore. It's just people having worked with me. Well, um, well, um, uh, find me. And it's art. It's funny. It's already, it's not funny. I'm, I'm thankful. It's full of gratitude. It's already starting yeah. to happen. So, um, yeah. uh, and that part I'm really happy about. So, um, but that for me is just, you know, whatever your deal is, you know, it, you know, if you, um, you have a stone or something that you like to rub or whatever, but just yeah. whatever, I think an important, a really spiritual ritual that is tangible is important to just get you grounded into that gratitude that you mentioned, I think that's so mm -hmm. important and just uh, setting an intention. That's all. Yeah. Setting an intention. Well, yeah. And I have a gratitude journal and part of this gratitude journal is setting your intention for the day. So I think this morning it was to be a kind person and to, to be of service. I've noticed when I give more, I receive more. It's that universal law you have yes, to give in order to yep. receive. Um, and a lot of people are great at giving, which I know you are, but also have trouble receiving. And so that's kind of like that push and pull. And so everybody has something that they're, they're going to continue working on. And so it is truly setting that intention, like you said. Good. Wonderful. Um, we are going to end our show, but I always like to give you an opportunity. Is there anything you'd like to leave with the audience? Any poignant tip, thought? Um, Anything about your journey? Yeah. So I think the, the one tip I have is it's okay to offer someone else help and they're not going to necessarily take away from your means. So often we're, we're afraid that, hey, if we let you in and sit at our table, our portion of dinner is going to get smaller, so to speak, mm -hmm. or the portion mm -hmm. of pie, as opposed mm -hmm. to it getting bigger. And that's mm -hmm. something I feel like me and my squad have always done is like, hey, who do I know? How could I help you? And this is just going to continue women getting stronger and more women sitting in those seats, in those executive seats. Yeah, it's like a, it's, it's more of a ripple effect. I mean, your, mm -hmm. your pond gets larger because the more people you help, it just ripples out versus if you're just sitting by yourself, there's no rippling, right? And so yeah. the more people you manage just... The current builds, it gets bigger, it gets to the ocean. So well, I and love I, that. yeah, and I feel like when you're sitting by yourself, you're sitting in fear, like, oh shoot, someone may come up and take my seat, as opposed to, hey, I got all my girls here and Kimberly's really great at networking. She's so smart and she brings so much th to the table. And you have so many gifts that I don't, and vice versa. And so oh, totally. let's see how oh, yeah. we could complement each other. And just looking at each other, not as competition, but as a team, because we oh, no. are. You've been, yeah, that's one. I mean, I have to say steadfast and strong. It's like, you know, you have been one of my biggest supporters. And just when I've had some difficult times and, and, you know, where some people can be like, I'm glad she's struggling. You know, you are always yeah. like, no, you can do this. You are confidence builder. And I, you know, and I really respected you because you were driven and ambitious like myself too. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah. So thank you for that. You are a dear friend. I, I appreciate friend. it. Thank you for your time. This has been great. I can't wait to Wonderful. see you and host you and Doug I here. I would love to see your beautiful home. Yes. We will get out there for sure. And yeah. Um, yeah. So say hi to Thurston. Give him a big hug for me. I'm going to drop you down the green room for a minute and I will I'd see you here shortly. Yes, right. I will for sure. Okay. Um, we talked about you are the average of the top five people you spend the most time with. I want to give you an opportunity to elevate yourself in your business. If you're interested in joining my peer advisory group that I'm building here in the Bay Area, 
um, please, please reach out here or simply go to Performance Leadership International and set up a conversation. No obligation, but um, uh, it certainly will make a difference. It will change you and it will change your life. So um, please keep in mind that we have this show every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. East, uh, 11 a.m. Central time and 12 Eastern time. So I am going to say bye for now. And until then, we will see you. All right. Thank you for joining me today. You can learn more about me, my products and services at performanceleadershipintl.com. Make sure to join me for another episode every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Central Time on my globally recognized show, Wealth and Women with Kimberly.